Hello everyone, my name is Jen Kirk and today I'm going to be talking to you about balance of park visitation and preservation. The national parks have been entwined into the fabric of American life for so many generations that it's hard to imagine the nation without them. But the decision to set these special places aside was not an obvious or easy one. No roadmap existed for the journey that created the national parks because no place, places quite like them existed anywhere in the world. The parks were born because in the mid 1800s, a relatively small group of people had a vision, what writer Wallace Stengler has called the best idea we ever had to make sure that America's greatest national treasures would belong to everyone and remain preserved forever. David Barna, National Park Service Chief of Public Affairs explains, America's developed a nation of pride of the natural wonders in this nation and they believe that they rivaled the great castles and cathedrals of Europe. Responding to such calls, Congress and President Abraham Lincoln put Yosemite under the protection of California during the Civil War. In 1872, former General President Ulysses S. Grant made Yellowstone America and the world's first truly national park. More parks soon followed suit beginning in the late 19th century. Cultural sites like Arizona's prehistoric Casa Grande were honored as well. President the Theodore Roosevelt was one of the park system's greatest patrons. During his administration, five new parks were created as well as 18 national monuments, four national game refuges, 51 bird sanctuaries, and over 100 million acres of national forest. As you can see here on this slide, we have the national park system today. We have 394 units, we have historical parks, monuments, national parks, battlefields and military parks, preserves, recreation areas, seashores, parkways, lakeshores, and reserves. So there's quite a bit that we have under here. In the 1920s and 30s, visitors began pouring into national parks. Most arrived by car and the parks were not ready to handle the influx of tourists. Attendance soared and people were using these parks as playgrounds. Early park leaders thought the best way to protect the parks was to encourage more visitors. This worked, however, the increase in numbers brought about an increasing demand on the parks which put the balance between preservation and use to the test. Signs were set up to educate people on the scenery and wildlife and museums were filled with mounted animals and geological artifacts. This is when problems really started to arise. Tunnels were being cut through trees as educational visuals. Coals were being dumped over the cliffs of Glacier Point in order to amuse visitors. Roads were built and crowding began, became a problem. It was then that the negative impacts of tourists began, and they have just been getting worse with time. Many have recognized the need to act in order to keep these areas preserved, but with the numbers increasing every year, the efforts to reverse these impacts become harder. What impact does park visitation have on the preservation of national parks? As the public steps in and out of the national and state parks, preservation for future generations is at risk. According to the National Park Conservation Association, actions must be taken to ensure a balance between visitation and preservation in our national parks. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park brought in nearly 10 million visitors in 2010, making it the most visited national park in the United States. With this many people coming in and out of one park, finding a balance between preservation and visitation can be challenging. An important part to maintaining the national park system is raising awareness about the natural and cultural elements of the park. This could also mean increasing visitation to reach that goal. However, there has been a significant increase in the number of people visiting the parks, especially in the summer months of July and August. Summertime, millions of Americans will pack the family car for a once in a lifetime trip to some of the nation's most spectacular and significant places. Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, Martin Luther King Jr.'s home, Great Smoky Mountains, Yosemite, Mesa Verde, or Gettysburg. 
These are all images of grandeur and of our shared history, but the experiences that some visitors will have this summer in our national parks may not live up to expectations. If a family is traveling to Olympic National Park in Washington, or to the CNO Canal National Historic Park in Maryland, the visitor center may be closed because the parks don't have sufficient staff to keep them open. If a family makes a trip to Valley Forge National Historic Park to teach the children about the Revolutionary War, some of the buildings dating to General George Washington encampment will be locked. The reason? Chronic underfunding and increasing park responsibilities that do not come with additional funding such as protecting the Statue of Liberty, Mount Rushmore, Independence Hall, and the Washington Monument from the possibility of terrorist attack. Decades of financial neglect have taken a toll on the 387 sites within the national park system. National parks operate on an average with only two-thirds of the needed funding, a system-wide shortfall that translates to more than $600 million annually. Since permanent park staff are hired and paid from the Park Service operating budget, the $600 million funding shortfall directly reduces the Park Service ability to maintain the staff necessary to preserve the parks and consequently compromises the agency's mission to preserve our parks unimpaired for the enjoyment of future generations. According to the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, there were 1,841 commissioned permanent rangers and 616 seasonal rangers in 1980. By 2001, the number of permanent commissioned rangers had dropped 16.4% to 1,539, and the number of seasonal rangers had dropped by 23.9% to 469. During the same time, visitation to the parks had increased by more than 60 million people and the number of units has increased by 54. A shortage of law enforcement rangers has had a direct impact on park resources. From 1997 to 1999, Redwood National and State Parks recorded 186 incidents of vandalism, arson, burglary, and theft, including theft of old growth redwood trees. In 1998, the Department of Interior concluded that the law enforcement program at Lake Mead National Recreation Area in Nevada was one of the most underfunded in the nation. Not coincidentally, Lake Mead's archaeological sites and historic structures have suffered increasing theft and vandalism. This past January, the National Park Service was involved in a well-publicized raid on a ring of poachers that have been looting Shenandoah National Park of its black bears and ginseng for years. Without park rangers, tourists are harming the environment in many ways and may be unaware of what they are doing. Many visitors are there to see the beauty in nature and are focusing on enjoying themselves and not what they are leaving behind. Actions such as trampling vegetation and parking in areas that are not designated for parking can add to the destruction of the land. Companies that run air tours and snowmobile tours are adding to the enjoyment of the visitor but may not pay attention to how they are affecting other visitors as well as wildlife. Because of the amount of tourism in these areas, many problems arise and these issues have been brought to the attention of the public in order to save and maintain these areas from further harm. The National Park System produces a large volume of tourists from both domestic as well as foreign travelers. These visitors have major benefits for the United States economy and the balance of trade with other countries. Visitation to these parks has increased exponentially over the years. In the 1920s, visitation in the parks amounted to about 1 million visitors. In 2010, the total visits numbered approximately 281 million. These parks are a popular tourist destination for many Americas, Americans seeking a taste of nature. Since there are increasing numbers of tourists visiting these areas every year, the impact they have on the environment in these areas is immense. Over the past 50 years, tourism has become a major cause of environmental damage when it should be a force for enhancement and protection. Whether it's noise pollution from cars or trampling vegetation, tourists are harming the land. National parks are fragile environments that need extra effort exerted in order to preserve them for future generations. Many things are being done to try to reduce or reverse this impact, 
limiting the amount of tours during certain times of year, offering shuttle services, limiting air tours, promoting the take-in, take-out policy, and educating the public about these issues are all measures that have been put in place to lessen the impact tourists are causing. Without these actions, future generations will not be able to enjoy these peaceful, scenic areas. Tourists come into national parks and many have no regard for the area they are visiting. Some tourists go to these parks to enjoy the scenery and to get closer to nature, but many are, dis are destructive because they do not know any better. Some problems faced by the areas due to tourism include ignorance, lack of ability, lack of capability, lack of realization, lack of appreciation, and lack of agreement. Tourists do not always know how precious and fragile these areas are and thus neither appreciates the beauty of where they are nor realize how much harm they can and are inflicting. Environments and those promoting the protection of nature often see tourists as the scourge of the environment. Some tourists may still believe in anthropocentric approach to nature. This means they believe in that nature is only there to serve human interests and promote human welfare. The concern for the environment is of little or no importance and human welfare is the ultimate objective. Rights for nature and the natural environment has become more important as time goes on, but there are still those who have no regard for nature and are destroying it without any care. There are three main sources of impact left on national parks by tourists. Depletion of national resources, pollution, and physical impacts. Tourists generate land degradation, air and noise pollution, littering, trampling, and the alteration of ecosystems. All of these areas of impact not only risk the well-being of the land, but also the species that call these areas home. With the growing number of visitors to these parks, crowding becomes a major problem. In the National Park Service, Natural Resources challenges park officials and not acknowledge the issue saying, parks are becoming increasingly crowded remnants of primitive America in a fragmented landscape. Threatened by the invasion of non-invasive species, pollution from near and far, and incompatible use of resources in and around parks. Crowding can minimize the ability to enjoy the scenic areas and also lessens the quality of the park's natural resources. If visitation is uncontrolled or visitors overuse the land, landscapes, historic sites can degrade. Crowding can also produce large amounts of stress, annoyance, anger, and other attitudes that will lessen the peaceful experience that tourists seek in national parks. If the carrying capacity has been reached, many negative things start occurring in the park, which is a sign that there is too much crowding. The consistent visitation from tourists can disrupt, disrupt wildlife in drastic ways. The massive amounts of visitors can disturb the breeding cycles of animals and alter their natural behaviors. Animal behavior starts changing once crowding begins, nesting patterns of birds change, the number of animals begin to reduce, and in worst case scenarios, species can become extinct. Many national parks have tourist facilities such as bathrooms or information centers. These areas are also impacting the land. They reduce some of the natural landscape of the area and can be considered aesthetic degradation. Though many tourist facilities in a national park try to keep the theme of nature involved, they are not always in sync with the surrounding areas. Over the past 15 years, the level of visitation to Yosemite has increased dramatically to over 4 million visitors per year, causing a multiplicity of adverse effects on the valley's habitat. This case focuses specifically on the detrimental effect of vehicular traffic associated with high levels of visitation in Yosemite National Park. Automobiles in the park cause traffic congestion, the need for more parking, lots and broader roads, and noise, air, and visual pollution in the park, damaging the plethora of flora and fauna species residing in the park while also detracting from the visitor experience. Although the richness of the experience is diminished with problems of automobile traffic, tourism continues to grow. Moreover, strong public support for the implementation of traffic restrictions suggests that the stricter controls will not hinder the continued expansion of tourism. Rather, it will transform the current visitation into true ecotourism. 
The Yosemite National Park Service Administration, part of the U.S. Department of Interior, is faced with the task of determining the most suitable, cost-effective, and beneficial method of reducing traffic in the park.